Welcome to A Basic Introduction to Mechanical Ventilation. This is Chapter 5, Setting Up a Ventilator. Now for the purposes of demonstrating in this video, I'm going to use a simulator rather than taking a video of an actual ventilator in action. The simulator I'm going to be using is that of the Hamilton T1 transport ventilator. These simulators are available on the Hamilton website and there is actually a, a wide variety of ventilators that they market that they have simulators for. And I found using these simulators to be a really great way to practice using a mechanical ventilator before actually using a real person. So I would encourage you to use the simulators available at the Hamilton Medical website. However, please note that I don't endorse any particular brand or manufacturer of a ventilator. I am only using these simulators because they are high quality and readily available. So when you're using a ventilator, the first thing you need to do is choose the mode that you want to use. There are a wide variety of modes and unfortunately most ventilator manufacturers will use different mode names and sometimes it's a little complicated. Today, because dual mode is the most popular mode uh, used uh, commonly, I'm going to use a dual mode as part of the demonstration. So on this I would select the SCMV Plus, which is a uh, which is the dual mode of, um, mode on this particular ventilator. In other ones it can be called VC plus or PRVC. Now the dual mode will ask you to first set the title volume uh, as your control variable. Now you'll recall that a dual mode will usually set one variable, allow the other one to vary, but within the algorithms of the of the ventilator, it will try to then find the best meet, uh, match and usually pressure to match the patient's needs. So in this case we're going to set the tidal volume first and this is the controlled variable that we're going to uh, that we're going to ver or we're going to take care of. The average person ballpark tidal volume that you would like to set usually as a baseline is about 8 kilograms, uh, 8 milliliters per kilogram. So let's say for me I'm about 80 kilograms so I'm going to uh, go with uh, 640 milliliters as my tidal volume. Then next, you can you want to set the other part of the minute ventilation, and that's the respiratory rate. Most ventilators will set at about 10 or 12. It, it's simply just a matter of choice, and you can just adjust that up or down as you feel is necessary if the patient's in a complete mo uh, controlled mode, or if they're going to assist, then you don't have to worry as much about the rate. Now we deal with the oxygenation issue. This is fairly straightforward. The only two variables that you can adjust on a ventilator that adjust the uh, oxygenation is the PEEP and the FiO2. And so most ventilators will set a PEEP of a default of about five, but if the patient is um, having problems with hypoxemia, you may want to set that higher depending on what you feel that the patient needs. Now remember the PEEP is added to the total airway pressure and so if the patient is having problems with low compliance the higher PEEP may actually cause uh, a component of barotrauma. So this is something you need to watch. Finally, then you need to set your FiO2. Um, obviously, 21% is room air, 100% is, uh, uh, is complete oxygen. Now, depending on your, your institution or your organization, you may have a default setting that you want to uh, select. Some organizations will set it by default at 100% and then rapidly titrate that down. So we're going to say this patient probably doesn't have a lot of oxygenation problems, but we'll set it at 50% and then we can titrate that up or down as necessary. Finally, if the patient is on a uh, is going to be assisting their ventilation, then you may need to adjust their flow trigger. So the flow trigger is what 
the, uh, the threshold, the ventilator will accept from the patient as the uh, indication of the patient take, trying to take a breath to deliver the breath. Again, usually this is set uh, for uh, flow at around 5 liters per minute and for uh, uh, ventilators that use a pressure trigger, this is usually set at uh, minus 3. In some circumstances, you're going to want to adjust the IE ratio uh, depending on the patient's characteristics such as if they have uh, obstructive uh, uh, airways or COPD or asthma, you may need to extend their inspiratory time in order to give them more time to exhale. Or if they have a lot of problems with, uh, with uh, airway, with uh, lung recruitment, and you want to maximize the amount of time they spend in inspiration, you may want to set their IE ratio closer to one to one or even invert the ratio if appropriate. After you've done all of those things, you click confirm and you can start your ventilation and you're off to the races.